Hi, I'm John Gula. Today we have with us Jim Lewis, our in-house product expert, to discuss compounded gear oils. Today we're going to cover uh, what a compounded gear oil is and some of their typical applications. That's right, John. But let's first discuss exactly what a compound gear oil actually is. And uh, basically, it's a very thick type gear oil. It's very heavy on the viscosity side. Um, and additional, additionally to that, it has tallow in it, which is animal fat or fatty acids. And uh, this is a better alternative to extreme pressure additives that we find common in most our gear oils, and uh, it's used in certain applications. There's several generic terms that we talk about when we're talking about these uh, compounded gear oil, which we named our category after, okay. um, and because it's compounded with animal fat, and that's the molecules compounded with that. Um, additionally, Worm gear oils might be referred to as a worm drive because that's essentially where it's mainly used in modern. One of the typical applications on Absolutely. Or it might be called cylinder oil because back in the day it actually used to be using steam locomotives on their steam cylinders. That's on the interesting because it's like uh, old school technology. Still being, used, still being today, used today, so right? It hasn't changed much worked. today. But let's first discuss its most common application, which would be worm gear drives. And worm gear drives, uh, basically, you have a giant drive gear that drives this worm and it's meant for extreme pressure type applications. Um, the problem with it is there's a ton of load, and because of that worm, that screw that spins against the other, there's a lot of sliding action that goes on there. And it doesn't really spin at a high speed, so you're never able to really achieve hydrodynamic lubrication where the oil actually separates the two mating surfaces. So that's the problem with worm gear drives and why we have to use these very thick, viscous type gear oils. Right. In addition, uh, we're using animal fat that replaces the EP additive in here. Um, EP being sulfur phosphorus, which we've discussed before. Um, sulfur phosphorus eats yellow metals, which is your copper alloys. Purposely built into a worm gear drive, your main driven gear actually is made out of copper alloys, so it's actually softer than your worm drive, and it's meant to actually fail first, and that's why it's made as a softer metal. Um, it's easier to change that gear out than it is the worm gear drive and the expense as well. And uh, so that's actually meant to fail first. So if you use an EP gear oil in there, it's going to make that bull gear or main drive gear fail even faster. So that's where they had to find a substitute for that. So you get a very thick, viscous type product, and then they put animal fat, which had great EP characteristics to it, you know, without being sulfur phosphorus type product. Now kind of back to what we you had mentioned before and why they refer to it as cylinder oils or the steam cylinder type lubricants and like you said it was used way back when on the old steam locomotives and it was the uh, reciprocating piston on the sides that used to run those drive you wheels you know right flying steam there. flying out right so they need to lubricate those pistons inside there so that's where the terminology comes from they developed this product especially for that application because it has great the tallow that's in there has great emulsibility with water so it doesn't really get all congealed up and it actually has great metal wetting on the metal surfaces in there, but it still doesn't adversely get affected by the water or the high pressure steam and heat and all that. So that's where it actually came from, the steam cylinders on the locomotive. And still today, you know, it's the same formulation today that they used back then and that's why sometimes they'll refer to them as cylinder oils or steam cylinder oils. Wow, and that being said, the steam cylinder oils, is, is there still an application in, in today's time where those type of uh, issues are, are, are... Absolutely, outside of like the worm gear drives, right? right? So you might still have a bearing application or a gearbox that just might be operating in a high water contact type area or high steam uh, paper plants, okay. good example. That the OEM might actually call for a product like this just because it does do such a good job in these high temperature water type applications and the thickness of it. I mean, it's outstanding thickness, you know, so it, it, it's used in a, a lot of different applications throughout the industrial plant still today. But the formulations themselves remain unchanged. Something that was honest. proven way back when. And, and still Absolutely. Used. You might have better base oil nowadays, but really it's just using that old common animal fat that they used to back then, and it, uh, it's done a great job. But in these applications, you don't want to exchange it for other type gear lubricants. If they're calling for a compounded or a cylinder type oil, you want to use a compounded oil in those applications. EP. Exactly right. They're, they're calling for it for a reason, and those are some of the reasons we discussed. That's interesting. All right, well, thanks, Jim, for that great explanation on compounded gear oils, and uh, hopefully now our customers have a better understanding of what a compounded gear oil is and where it should be used and should not be used. For more videos like this, or if you'd like to learn more about other products we sell, please visit petroleumservicecompany.com. Mm -hmm.